I lived in Colorado at the time, super high altitude, low humidity, so I just chalk it up to dry skin. Everybody there has dry skin. So I would put lotion on my hands, my feet, my entire body a couple times a day. But my hands got worse and worse to the point that my cuticles had big hanging cuticle sheets of skin, like a like a thin tissue paper on my hands. So it was probably a year or so. I waited and I went to my primary care doctor and I said, I can't get my hands to stop flaking. And at that point, they had started to crack and bleed. So every one of my fingertips was like multiple little paper cuts. It's like having little tiny paper cuts that you can't see, but they hurt all the time. So I went to my primary care doctor in Colorado, and he said, well, I think you might have psoriasis, but we'll check and see. So I checked me to see if I had fungus in my nails or hands or anything, and it didn't come up with anything. So he said, I think you have psoriasis. And I said, okay, how do we cure it? And he said, well, you can't cure it. But what we'll do is we'll give you topical ointments, and that will take care of it. So 10 years later, I had been to three primary care doctors, four dermatologists, and that was in Colorado, Texas, and California. So over the course of 11 years, it got worse and worse. And I started to get psoriasis on my elbows. My elbows would get patches. They didn't peel like my hands, but they were painful and sore in patches. And my feet, my feet would itch all the time. And it's very difficult when you're at work or anywhere in a business suit, which I typically wear in heels to take off your shoes and scratch your feet and your hands. So at that point, I knew what I had, but traditional medicine couldn't seem to figure it out. So I had to ask every single healthcare professional, is there any dietary link? Is there something that I'm eating? Is there something that I'm using? Is it my hands, so is it my shower gel? Is it the shampoo that I'm getting on my hands, dish soap? So I would ask people over and over, colleagues, and particularly the physicians, and they all said, nope, there's absolutely no dietary link with surprises. And in my first meeting with Valine, we talked about my nutrition and my diet, and just at the end of the conversation, I said to her, because I hadn't shown her my hands, I, I typically talk a lot with my hands, but I also had, had kept my hands covered a long time. And I looked at her and I said, she said, is there anything else that plays into this? You know, is there something else? And I said, well, I have psoriasis and it's annoying, but I understand there's nothing I can do to take care of it except keep going to doctors and light therapies and treatments and expensive, you know, remedies that don't really help. And Feline looked at me and she said, I can cure psoriasis. And I have to be honest, I thought, well, she's pretty bold. And I've talked to everybody in the healthcare industry in three different states, and they all tell me that they can't. So I looked at her and I said, can you really? And she said, absolutely. I, I can show you what we can do and we can be successful in eliminating your psoriasis. And so at that point I thought, I've tried everything else. I might as well try this. Lean knew, she knew about psoriasis. She explained it further to me than the medical providers have, the doctors. She said, there's a dietary link. It's actually an inflammatory disease. And I had no idea that there really was. I mean, I knew when I asked those questions all those times that there might be something, but everybody had told me no. So she said, there's a dietary link. Whatever the foods are that you're eating, there are certain foods that are inflaming your system, and this is what's causing the psoriasis. So she gave me an anti-inflammatory food diet. It was comprised of basically the things that I couldn't eat. I walked out of the office that day and I thought, okay, everything I eat is on this food list. And things like wheat, bread, tomatoes, red, red sauces, dairy, all the things that I ate every single day that were my primary 
food choices were the things that were on the anti-inflammatory diet to avoid. So I thought, okay, might be kind of difficult to take out all my, my usual food choices, but if I can get my skin to stop peeling off and not have that pain all the time and the itching, I'm willing to try it. And I followed the diet absolutely to the letter. And within three weeks, my hand started to heal. I no longer could take my skin and just peel off sheets of skin. And I stopped itching constantly. She also told me to take baking soda baths. And I looked at her and I said, how do I put my whole body in baking soda? But it was really primarily my feet and my hands and my elbows. So I would soak my hands and my feet in baking soda bath. And then afterwards, she told me to put olive oil on them. So I would do that at night. I couldn't do that before I went to work. But I would do that at night and put olive oil. And within three weeks, between the diet those home remedy treatments, which were far less expensive than all the medications I had purchased for years and years. And she also gave me supplements to take. And the primary supplement that we talked about was the evening primrose oil, which I had never heard of. I mean, I've seen it in a health food store, but I had no idea what it was. So I started taking the evening primrose oil capsules three times a day. And those three simple and easy changes it basically eliminated psoriasis from me completely. I'm happier because I feel like I have control. And it seems so minor, but it's so huge to not have control of your own body. It seems, like I say, it seems insignificant. Because I didn't have a life-threatening disease. But not to be able to control just something like your skin and your nails and silly things which are, are so unimportant when I look at the big picture. But my body just to be doing what it had to do and have doctors tell me that's just what it does. You have to live with it. We can't cure it. We can't fix it. And to keep trying things and every time I would try a different ointment or a different medication. And whatever the treatment was, I think, okay, this is going to fix it. I'm going to get back to normal. And I finally accepted that I wasn't going to have normal skin and I wasn't going to be normal as far as I can't touch things without pain and I can't go around without itching. So once I got to the point that I accepted that to be my normal, I think that in a way I kind of gave up. And now I don't have to give up anymore.